and while he was a student here from 1985 to 1990 he started with his activities he got a intuition and he started with the activities of conservation of vetsur cow we know that it became a big moment and he was helped with a teamwork led by vasudev nambudri at that time and also had the eminent action done by our uh, anil savior sir at the time and later it became taken up by soshama ait madam also and along with that he started activities for community conservation so his concept changed from institute conservation or what is being done by veterinary college he came to community conservation that is the in situ conservation in the premises of the field conservation he did activities on that and he started with uh, promoting farmers field work to see that vetsur was conserved there he got help from kld board the md at the time and also he started with promoting ai in field condition through kld board and for all these he was supported by nbagr national bureau of energetic resources and he got few projects through them on genotyping and gene mapping of vetsur cows and he is also a recipient of go green award and best breeder award there are lots to talk about him and we are very happy to have him with us today and jaydevan sir will be enlightening us on most of the native breeds so we know that native breeds are of great importance and he will be enlightening us on this topic so i welcome how heartily dr jaydevan and to please have the talk on this topic please sir thank you thank you dr jason davis i am really thankful to you all because you have given me the subject that i love for the past life or or my past life and so intimate to me so i am really happy and thankful to all of you um the topic is as you already told that is kerala's lesser known population cattle population and beyond milk there are two parts i am just introducing some lesser known population we know that we have a well known population that is vetsur cow and all this history and uh, all these things justin has just pointed out but there are many sisters to uh, vetsur cow as we can come across you go to any place in kerala you can see um small small pockets of wherein there are cattle having the same characters and they are uh, having their progeny to the same character that means that makes a breed so uh, let me just go into this different kind of um, uh, cattle populations and also how they thrive how they get conserved is it solely because of this with their uh, you know they they will be having yield range from 600 to 800 kilos per uh, Uh, lactation that that won't be sufficient for them to the farmers to keep these cows so how they consider these cows and what is their uh, motivating factors i will just show some of the things you know that kerala kerala is a hotspot of biodiversity we, we always say this is a hotspot what is a hotspot this name was coined by an eminent ecologist a british ecologist norman mayer and he denoted some 25 hotspots of biodiversity in the world on the earth which has some endemic species of flora and fauna that to that particular place only that mostly fall in tropics because tropics are the hotspots generally and in india the western ghats and especially kerala is a rich place for all the species to grow so it get get reflected in any place anything in kerala it can be diverse everywhere 
You check the soil, it is diverse. Climate is diverse. And vegetation and crops, definitely, you can see. And so is the case of domestic animal diversity. You can see diversity not only in cattle, you can see it in poultry, ducks, chicken, goats, everywhere you can see the, this kind of biodiversity, domestic animal diversity. But our topic is on cattle. For a trained eye only, we can spot their existence, but they are existing. I can show some of the slides where I have seen, I have personally seen that the, that, that is the uh, only thing that I say. So many people say that we have a cow called Tenmala, we have a cow called Ilapulli, things like that. But I haven't seen, whatever I have seen, I am going to present. What are the materials that I am giving, giving has some kind of a scientific understanding uh, or not just, uh, uh, just some, but you're sharing some thoughts. So our domestic animal diversity is existing, if you look into it, and it's thriving well. And you know that Kerala is a place where people keep only less number of animals, maybe one or two. So even in a smallholder system, unlike if you look into um, uh, North India, we have some big wasalas, things like that. We don't have such a facility here. But within this smallholder system also they thrive. And there are a lot of conservation efforts from the part of people, communities, government, NGOs, entrepreneurs, all, all sorts of conservation efforts are happening. We can see all these things. Anyway, this is a well-known cattle, that is virtual cattle. We'll just start with this slide, it's my own cow. Um, and it started from the student level. Actually, it's a student, it was a student project only. You see, Dr. Justin has already told. Actually, uh, he named the, uh, Mr. M. N. Vasudevan Budri. He was uh, the student editor of the particular college magazine. Name is Havis. He wanted to have some kind of um, uh, biodiversity thing, that is, uh, native cows, things like that, in his particular magazine. He got some knowledge about virtual cows from one of the classes of uh, Professor T.K. Thomas, our own professor. And he shared it with Anil Sakriya, and they set out to see these cows. So at that time, in 1988, uh, Mr. Satish and Anil Sakriya gone there, and they found uh, uh, some cows with the help of uh, Mr. K.V. Narayana Swami, here. So it started. It started like uh, we got an ICR project like that, and institutionally it was very good. It was functioning very good. It was, it was, it has an amazing success in the history of breed conservation in India. But later, we see that the number of still very less, and uh, the people participation in this conservation was pretty less. It was costing like anything. The cow was, at that time, was costing the, uh, the price of a, what do you say, that a, that a, a small car. And uh, again, I felt like that uh, it, it should be sustained only through the community conservation. So we have done so many works on it. You just see the characters, characters of the virtual cow. This I show this slide, not to enlighten you about this uh, virtual cow or anything. That is such a characterization doesn't happen in the rest of the slides. That is what I say. It has solid colors. It can be brown, it can be black or white, but there are no patches or uh, dots in it. That's very special. In all the cows that I am uh, saying henceforth will be um, very much heat tolerant, will be having a small harm, and uh, very much disease resistant. This is the uh, attributes that you can uh, go give to any cows that I say within Kerala or even in India, uh, or uh, type of cows that we see both The Excuse me, sir. Slides are not visible. Yes, sir. Yes. Okay, let me see. Hello, good morning. Hi.
Is it visible now? Is it visible now? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh, previously, now we have previously, you are not seeing anything. No, sir. Oh, I am really sorry. Okay, I can just. Okay, well, fine. Thank you. Sir. Is that okay now? Hello, can you hear yes, me? Sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, yes, sir. Okay, can continue. Okay, okay, okay. So this is cow that you see is my cow you have seen now. Hello? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. So let me come to our mature cow. This cow, you know, it was it was there in uh, what I am, I am places in plenty, but later on our crossbreeding activities towards the end of its uh, cows, the bulls were castrated and uh, we were very, it was very tough to get a bull that time. Anyway, we got it. Like that it came up. So this is a cat after mature that is so much popular in Kerala. This is called the Kasavod cattle. But you can see this cow everywhere in, uh, in each district in uh, Kerala is so very popular. It has its origins in uh, South Canara or near the Chandragiri River. The one important peculiarity these cows are having are they are extremely heat tolerant and they are adapted to different kind of terrains. Even in hilly area, seaside also they can we can see that. The difference with mature is one is that they have solid colors, but rarely we can see patches or spots. This cow has been promoted by societies like Castle Dwarf Conservation Society, led by Mr. P.K. Lal and so many other people. And, and you can you can uh, if you if you check the cow, you can still find a difference between virtue in its height, its color, its temperament, anything, you can see uh, the difference. This is a, a Periyar cattle. This is a beautiful cattle that you can see. This has its origin from the banks of river Periyar in uh, maybe in Ernavalam district. Kodamangalam, Neriyamangalam, um, Kuttambura, it's previously called Kuttambura also. You see it has a very good angular body, very good dairy characteristics. Its feed conversion efficiency is very good. Its diameter conversion rate is very good. And it was there from time immemorial, I can say, because this place was the most inhabited place in Kerala. There are references to this place from in Gurnar scriptures, uh, right from BC3. And they suffered, um, these people there or inhabitants suffered huge casualties with two floods there, one in AD 370 and one in AD uh, 1340. So, these cows strayed into the forest and later on they came back with the people and they may be the right breed, the, uh, the, uh, the breed before Vichura and all this came. They, this, uh, they maybe they are the mother of uh, Vichura and all. That is what I think because the characters and all very similar to Vichura, but there is difference. You can see there is conservation effort by Mr. Boskurian, who is holding this cow. He got somewhere around uh, 50 to 70 cows uh, in a particular area near the river uh, uh, Peria. We have to take a special look at this Peria cattle. Uh, special emphasis has to be given. They are in good numbers. They are, uh, there is every likelihood that they will be getting a bridge status soon. This is Vadagara cattle from the northern part of uh, Kerala. That is Vadagara Taluk of Koli uh, district. I don't know much about it. Our own colleague, uh, Dr. Girish, is doing a very good work. Uh, yeah, they have this Vodagana Cattle Conservation Trust led by him and Mr. Prakash. Anyway, I know that's a very good yield. Not in good numbers, maybe I think it's maybe 100 or uh, most probably 150 good cows. So I don't know much about this cow because this cow is very less in number. Um, and next one is the Viluadri cattle. Viluadri cattle 
has its origins from Trishur district that is Tiruvalluamala. Tiruvalluamala is a place in uh, Trishur with a famous temple, Vilvadirinatha temple is there. This cow, the peculiarity is, is well adapted to the hilly times, well adapted. And it thrives well on virtually anything like um, dried grass, dried uh, fallen leaves or even tree leaves and the bars, everything it will, it will eat. And you see this William means uh, in uh, Malayalam it is called Kuvalam or William is a very good medicinal plant. The Villua, uh, the Tiruvillua Mala means it's a place where so many uh, William trees are there. So their favorite forage is uh, is a medicinal plant by itself, and we get a very quality, good quality of milk. Uh, they are hardy milkies. Uh, the milk is pretty less, but they are very uh, good candidate for uh, our future conservation. Let me look at the different facets of conservation in Kerala. We see. If, it's, if you look into the past 25 to 30 years, the last decade we see more number of uh, indigenous cattle being kept by people. There's so many reasons to it. It has its reason in our thinking. We need to take only the safe food. We need to take different food, safe milk. Um, we have to go for some kind of organic farming or a system of medicine that is called that is entirely from the um, cow producers further it offers big entrepreneurship opportunities too just look at the milk part we all hear a to milk many times a day we may not be knowing or many people just say it will make something is something great. Uh, but let's look into what is it, what is its myths, and what is its reality. You know, uh, milk has many instruments. The prime one is water, then lipids or fat is there, proteins, generally the casins, sugars or lactose, we say. And of course, minerals and vitamins. Look, casein, it makes around 80% of total milk protein. Out of it, the beta casein is the second most prevalent one. Even within beta casein, there are two variants. That is A1 and A2. We all know that protein is made up of many smaller small amino acids as a chain. And there is a particular difference in the 67th position of this um, beta casein. In A2, the 67th position is occupied by proline. Whereas in A1, it is by history. That is the basic difference. Uh, genotypically, if you, if you look into it, that is the A2, A1 difference comes from this 67th position of amino acid that is found in the beta casein of the milk beta casein. So, this A2 milk is there everywhere. Our mother's milk is A2, the goat milk is generally A2, buffalo milk is A2 or um, of course our Indian cattle all yield A2 even in uh, some exotic breeds like Jersey, Guernsey or Channel Island breeds or uh, the breeds that originated from the south of France they all give uh, not only our cows some exotic ones also yield very good A2 milk so what makes the difference there are so many observations so many papers on this so many people say Mere observation, so many people say, scientifically proven things also. Anyway, these three, four points are uh, uh, well documented that I can I have said to share also. 
rather than giving the protection side of the a2 mill we can see the other way the consumption of a1 mill can be a cause of type 1 diabetes type 1 diabetes there is in children that happens in children there is selective loss of pancreatic so that can happen with the consumption of a uh, a to a1 milk by the mother and mother or the children there is always a higher chance of coronary artery diseases or heart diseases that happen to a person who takes more quantity of a1 milk for a prolonged period of time the other one bit more frightening to us that is sudden infant death syndrome we don't know the exact cause of uh, this death happening to babies less than one year old but the consumption of evan milk is surely a pointer to it it has positive correlation with the occurrence of sids autism autism is one major issue nowadays the prevalence is quite high if you compare it with some 2025 year or period previously the autism has a positive correlation with the consumption of uh, more of a1 milk so this a2 milk definitely protects us from this three four types and many more is there which i can which there is does not have any good scientific standing that's that's why i cannot say this a2 attribute with the milk with the protein uh, does not end with the protein it has a fat part also there is definite difference between the fat globular size of a2 milk and a1 milk the even in our university in our college we have done studies on the virtual uh, milk globular size we found it's much lesser than the other uh, any exotic or crossbred much lesser even comparable to mother's milk is rich in phospholi phospholipids the size does matter in digestibility is easily digestible it can be given to children very safe it can be given it can give it, it can be given to the convalescents who may not be having that uh, digestive powers it can be given to the convalescents who people who just got out from the upper illness they can be safely fed with this thing and this uh, ghee or clad fed butter that is produced from this um, uh, a2 milk has a capacity to break blood brain barrier that's very important that's why in our uh, previous ayurveda text so many vidhas that is produced Uh, all with the local cow or indigenous cow milk if we give brahmi gudam it is prepared it should be prepared i don't know how it is they prepare it now it should be prepared in uh, this bosindigas milk and th this has a pharmacodynamic action in the uh, neural tissue there right in the brain okay so we all want this good quality Milk, milk. So we go. We may go for uh, people. We may go for uh, uh, local cattle. The other area is organic farming. That I already told. We all want very good, tasty uh, fruits or vegetables. We can see if we do organic farming. That is farming with the use of uh, manure from um, organic or of organic origin. Maybe. maybe it's from animals or even tree leaves also uh, there is there they are also manures and uh, the nutrient value of the products food products from them is definitely high that is there is no doubt about it you take a kg of uh, uh, papaya from organic and uh, the other ways scarcely different if you can analyze and it's safe it doesn't have any harmful synthetic uh, fertilizer things like that or pesticides we do it so what are there is no residues or remnants and we can see that i was observing this thing it's a particular person called subhash palekar who was uh, 
who professes the zero budget natural farming. He always says uh, a cow is a must for this um, C Z B NF. So people want this cows. People start calling. Maybe uh, five ten years back, people frequently calls me to get one cow because they want to do this. They want to follow this uh, Sukhas Parikas method of uh, zero budget. Sir, please share the screen again, sir. Somebody in between share the screen, and your presentation got cut just now. Okay, okay. So please share again, sir. Okay, okay. Mr. Vishnu MM, please don't share. Vishnu MM. Okay. They then, sir, please do share. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Is that okay? Yes, sir. It has come. Oh, okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, sir. So, what we see with the zero budget natural farming, they have a particular profession called Jivamrata. Most of the people will be knowing that it's very popular among the practitioners of uh, organic farming in Kerala. I was thinking, what is it? Is there any merit? Things like that. I was just thinking, I can just show, I can just take only one product. They have so many products like uh, Bija Amrita, Jeeva Amrita, so many products. I just take only one. What is this? This is just a microbial culture for uh, soil rejuvenation. It's a microbial. You we know that soil is a, something which is living. It's not a dead thing. And the microbes inside it makes it living. So we are adding some life to the soil. Simple to prepare. We just take a drum, plastic drum, which are a kind of vessel you can use. Roughly 35 to 50 liters capacity you can use. We take a kg of um, fresh cow dung. That is very important. You know, the cow dung has many microbes in it. And the quality, things like that, uh, changes very fast. So you take as fresh as possible this cow dung. And cow urine, you can take yesterday's or a week back, no issues. And we have to have some black jaggery, not the other one. The bleached one is not perfect. Roughly 200 grams. And this chickpea, chickpea flavor. Chickpea means what is, what is chana. That is uh, um, kabuli chana. Or uh, Bengal gram, that black thing also we can use. Powder is very well. And I have written forest soil. It's very tough to get forest soil in the city. Uh, you can go, it just means that it has not been manipulated with any kind of um, fertilizer, things like that. You can take uh, from a place where there is no active aggressive agriculture that has happened for the past five or ten years. Or maybe a year, you can take a handful. And we need, of course, we need water. There's a particular method to prepare. It's very simple anyway, and it is working very well, I'm sure. Just take water first and put the cow dung into it and mix very well. Then add the jaggery that's powdered, plus this chick pea flour and mix it well. And you can cover the drum with a... Uh, um, jute bag things like that if you wet the jute bag it's better because it will hold to the uh, seams very well and just keep it there next day you take out the jute bag you just um, stir it well in clockwise direction they say just to aerate things like that i don't know what's the reason behind it this uh, clockwise anyway people are doing like that and continue it for uh, nearly two weeks maybe 12 days and you, it's ready for use. We can dilute it with uh, mm, some hundred times water. It can be directly fed to under the canopy of any tree 
or under the or for a vegetable plant or you can dilute it a bit more and we can use it as a uh, hello foliar spray also this works very good i have i have personally uh, done it at my house at my kitchen garden everything there is no doubt that jivamrata is working very well and why it has happened you can just see it's very simple the bacterial population has grown five times and fungi four times actinomyces three times nitrogen fixes around three times sorry and it fixes three times and uh, phosphorus soluble all is very important for the health of the soil and they have grown very well and they support uh, the uh, micronutrient intake by the plants they make all the things soluble and uh, uh, easy to absorb to be the plant by the plant next comes the i told that uh, panchagavya system of medicine um i was thinking what is panchagavya is it's readily available in uh, some temples they give panchagavya they offer panchagavya things like that i was thinking what is it and and recently i um, uh found this uh, excerpts of the particular book that is holy cancer how a cow saved my life is written by mr amir vaidya there is a bit of story in it Amit Vaidya is a third generation American. His uh, his forefather fathers was from Gujarat. He was very hard successful. He PhD in economics and working in a particular finance department of particular entertainment industry. Very successful and achiever by any American standards. But he had a very unhealthy lifestyle. and at the age of uh, 27 he was diagnosed with uh, cancer he got the best of the best treatment there chemotherapy and after a year in 2011 he had a relapse by the time between this this instances his mother mother too died father was no more before the story um died with the third degree brain tumor or something like that so anyway after the, the relapse the doctor told there is no much scope because it has spread to lungs so he doesn't want to bother the his friends there no parents not there so he told he thought i want to take care of my funeral myself before that i just want to go to india my own place i want to see my distant cousins there that was his uh, idea and one of his aunts told boy you just check there is some kind of uh, treatment in a particular place in gujarat they treat this kind of illness for uh, a rupee a day for 12 days or something like that you can just go through the book it may not be that exact but this a crux is this he go there and see all this weird things like that this this doctor gives him a concoction early morning give him a place to um, take rest and early morning he again give the same thing for some time 
it was uh, see that time he was saying that the taste i don't know any taste because anything everything was tasting like sawdust after this chemotherapy and all so he took it ready anyway why not give it a try that is what he was thinking was anyway what he felt much better within a few months or something like that he could walk he could jog he could run he go back to the earlier hospital he they say uh, there is much there is not much um, metaplasia it's not spread anywhere uh that's a good uh, good sign they say so if he again come by take the um other course next course and within a year or two he was perfectly okay that is the amit vaidya story he got this panchagavya for this particular kind of uh, hospital they say i don't know i haven't seen so um this ancient wisdom has something in it that is what i was thinking i can go to the next slide this panchagavya panchagavya is panja means five gavya means from cow is simple that i already taught this ghee uh, this extract from the dung urine milk and buttermilk only some people are uh, add curd or the ghee but buttermilk is is there should be there in the purest form uh, everything should be done except ghee prepared uh, uh, in the morning except ghee everything should be taken early in the morning that is uh, something very special about it we have to take the then that is coming from the maybe from the first defecation without getting spoiled in the flour that we can take in the take that extract maybe some with some water we can add in a cotton cloth or we can squeeze and get some juice maybe 5 to 10 ml for a person each one and uh, urine you can take before it falls down to the ground ghee we have to already prepare milk the fresh milk and the buttermilk actually we have to change this buttermilk get the buttermilk in the morning if not possible you can take the essence buttermilk no issues mix it well the thing is that i have written uh, milk and buttermilk it should not be like that milk and buttermilk should not be mixed together anything you can mix but except buttermilk should not be followed by milk or other ways uh, vice versa so you take you take ghee or buttermilk you stir it very well you take some 5 to 10 minutes for them to that mixing is very important so what to it may take half an hour you can place this panchagavya in direct sunlight for around half an hour to one hour you can just think because it has to dump some microbial potential after that you can take before food after food with food no issues if some if if it is uh, if, if you don't feel like taking it uh, um as such you can add some honey no issues so this is manjagavya this is very simple very simple maybe i say maybe because it's a researchable thing how it works it is just by microbiome synchronization that i got from the alena colon alena colon book is 10% human you most of the it's a very popular book you will be getting into the shelf it work by microbiome synchronization so what is a microbiome microbiome is a bi- balanced microbial flora I- I- within and outside our body you know we have some uh 100 trillion plus cells in our body and uh, our each human cell has nine microbial cells inside or outside it that is why we call we our self is only 10% so we have done so many uh, researches so many deep researches on our uh, our own uh, uh, what you say uh, mapping genetic mapping we have done so much so much of research and we got the exact picture of what is it now but we know we know we have mapped around 21000 genes 
and we know the codes and secrets and solutions for all the mankind we know all know but um we have around 4.4 million genes yet to be mapped that also works in synchronization with the human body cell so that is very important um our modern modus operandi was to kill this all this kind of microbes rather than synchronize so that's really bad we know that microbes are important anywhere right from our birth there is scientific evidence to prove that children born out of cesarean section are more prone to so many issues rather than the natural uh, natural birth process so they use vaginal swabs in front of the over the body of the children to get over it so so many kind of uh, diseases like uh, right from autoimmune diseases cancers um, so many illness has its origin from the microbes you know the uh, just take an example of uh, gluten we know that celiac disease that is gluten issue for some gluten is not an issue you can say it is a spin off effect or uh, <laughs> what you say uh, things are not always going in a linear fashion but it's not like that it is not a spin off effect or epi phenomenon as you say in biology it is really it is really connected to the gut microflora of the particular person so scientists are focusing on this uh, studying or mapping the microbiome and this projects like american gut project or companies like u biome uh, are blazing the trail of uh, microbial research and uh, mapping of mapping this genome so i feel like there is some way to connect with this panjigavya because you know cattle cattle has its digestion they, they just outsource their digestion process from microbes cattle are rich in indigenous cattle are very rich in um, this kind of microbes you know the woman is a vital mm, link for that uh, microbial fermentation so it is connected with the soil to the rumen and if we can get some of the microbes from this to ourselves if you don't get uh, by our natural things like that we are with the cow or something like that you can def definitely go for this panchagibya and it will work it is working it is working from centuries uh, centuries to the so kind of uh, panchagibya medicine things like that i told it is just an uh, offshoot of uh, offshoot of uh, ayurveda system uh, there are many researches that is happening in the panchagivya system of medicine one mr niranjan verma has done uh, pioneer work in this he got a university in kanchipuram uh, he offers some courses that is approved by the syllabus and the qualification everything is approved by the government of india and he is doing he, he got all sort of medicines for almost all kind of illness with this slight changes Uh, with this panchagivya things like that i don't know the much of it but there is a system of medicine there is panchagivya system of medicine the people who qualify with this thing is called gavisitas there are more than a dozen gavisitas in um, kerala i personally met this person nerendra mohan he is very uh, very knowledgeable but all these things has to be scientifically validated because we are into the evidences we cannot uh, quantify any experience so uh it's a particular topic that is researchable and it should be researched well so that part we are taken this um, uh food part um, health part now it is money part that's this indigenous staffs offer good entrepreneurial opportunities for people i have seen many trainings that is happening to produce home care or personal care products out of gau mutra or uh, gobar or uh, what you said that so how many products like uh, uh, previously some 10 years back it was done in from shimoga there are some 20 30 products i have seen 
but I was reluctant to use all these things. But now find now I find these products are really good, they're really appealing. These two particular products uh, are from um, Ambadi Goshala. Ambadi, Mr. Sham of Ambadi Goshala is doing a very good work on it. He got very good products. I have used personally used his soil, so things like this, not for his any kind of propaganda. But what I am saying, there is an entrepreneurship opportunity that is lying here. Uh, it has an environment front, uh, phase also. See, all these products, all these products, there is a particular product called the septic enzymes that we can, as a spray, we can use it in your house, office, things like that. It's a very good product, it's very appealing, it's working also. So, a big opportunity lies in the entrepreneurship uh, with regard to this Go products. And a bit of uh, random benefits, I should be saying. I, I just wanted to share it with you. This uh, is Arvind. He is a specially able student from Gordon uh, Mar again School. Last Deepavali, this people of Periyar Conservation uh, has made some hundreds of chirat uh, vise or diya uh, from Mutani Miti, uh, this thing, Gober and all these things. And this particular boy was trained on that and he is getting a, uh, a small sum of money for each. So it has such an angle. People who are um, economically weaker sessions or marginal people can take up this as a vocation and some small, small things that, for our everyday need, we can make. Otherwise, we'll be going for something else uh, that is not, all, not at all good for our um, environment. This is a very good example. It's a, uh, it does not have any big investment on it. It's just, uh, uh, just what you say, a, a small small thing where this can be made. Uh, it costs only less than 1,000 rupees. So it's a very good uh, uh, offshoot of this conservation efforts. And we have seen so many breeder societies that's coming up to sustain themselves. They have made ma uh, marketing this Vichur um, uh, Cow Milk in uh, after branding. This is from Vichur Breeders Association, that's from Kotayam. Uh, it is registered uh, under a register or something in Chennai. And uh, they are marketing uh, this product. They are branded, mechanized, and marketing very well. This Vichur brand, it is. It's a well-known brand now in Ernavalam and uh, nearby areas. This is one opportunity for the breeder association to thrive on it. Okay, let's look at the uh, raw patterns in conservation. As I said, nothing more to say. Individuals or communities take up this tax task. Then there are a lot of NGOs, lot, lot of NGOs. Um, it should be encouraged because if you, if you see a particular cow in Trishur or Palakkad, Ilapulli or wherever, we have to form a small group that you can say it's a breeder group or anything like that. It, it is an NGO anyway. It can be a trust, society or anything. It can be registered to NBAGR also. They will be getting some kind of assistance sometimes or even from KLD board they will be getting. These NGOs are doing a good lot of work. The first one was virtual conservation trust. Then which your Breeders Association came up, then Kerala Local Cattle Breeders Society came up, uh, then there is a Confederation of All Such Societies, that is Confederation of Indigenous Cattle Breeders Societies, Kerala. So this is the first time in India such a confederation came into existence. That's very important. So the breeder network is very strong in um, Kerala. Government definitely plays a very proactive role here. You can, the university, it's a prime example, they have done beautifully. This project that they are doing is a uh, very dedicated work of uh, research is there. And Kerala Livestock Development Board, they are doing a very good work because they have this, giving this uh, breeding inputs to all the uh, cows, that is indigenous cows. Uh, and there are prayer players came, come, coming into being. They are also doing their share of work but that's very prominently uh, done the coming the years com year, years coming years. We can see so many private players having keen interest in this mature, all this great development things like that. They'll be doing it also. Previously, this pre-development things like the all these things was it was king's job or emperor's job, you know, uh, or Kangayam 
or how their interest in the kings that time maybe uh, even in kangayam the name of the king itself is kangayam uh, and uh, gur uh, or bhavnagar yeah bhavnagar the king of bhavnagar was instrumental in developing his uh, type of uh, gur cows so now we have elected governments and the government should take initiative to for the breed development that's very important these people like individual ngo or private players are doing their job for the country they are doing it for the country uh, so government should take notice in all these activities and this conservation of domestic animal diversity is no more a fringe topic that was a fringe topic some 30 years back now it is a central topic only it's a mainstream topic only governments should take interest and they are taking it also it has to be improved the major issue here you see if we don't we are giving breeding inputs like bulls and things like that even we can do embryo transfer also but thing is where is the where is males has gone that area only government can do we have to have maximum number of bulls we have to have maximum uh, population for us to select the best ones otherwise there will be narrowing of the genetics of all this uh, breeds and it will devalue the quality of the breed so this is the right time and this is the high time government should have an emphasis on bull development also the conservation of indian cows i am now take uh, telling you with respect to the uh, populations native to kerala but any indian cow you see um the green house gases emitted by the cows they say is very high in india but the recent studies that has been published in down to earth and all this magazines show that compared to the exotic ones a single cow emits this enteric fermentation gases much less than what previously thought so we are not the real cause but we are the sufferer of this green uh, house gas so the indigenous cows are rightly poised in this era of climate change that's a very important point you know when the climate change happens it can have direct and indirect effects direct effect is the production performance will be much decreased and the reproductive performance also so the study shows that there is two things the production and reproduction the negative correlation is much lesser in indian cows compared to any other uh, exotic or prosperous and the indirect effect indirect is the loss of pasture lands for the um, crop residues Uh, fodder forage everything or your grains but the thing is that our cows can thrive on um diet with has less fodder value so that also that is also important anyway we can expect, expect by 2050 a 2.3 to 4.8 degree celsius temperature rise that time if we want to develop a wild cow for the dairy industry we have to have the gemplasm of this our native cows kerala cows or or an indian cows intact as an insurance for the future generations to come and my conclusion as our knowledge of domestic animal diversity continue to increase by way of documentation and registration of breeds we strive to take the first step of protection of our culture history environment livelihood and more importantly our future thank you thank you very much thank you very much sir So we had a very good session. My dear sir, has gone into the depths of uh, cattle conservation about the lesser known 
the breeds of India and its importance also in the present scenario. So now it's time for discussion, and uh, we can take some questions sir, now. Uh, can we ask questions, sir? Yes, of course. Yes, uh, good morning, uh, you are uh, My name is Dr. Rajendra Kumar. Uh, um, uh, I'm, uh, I am. Uh, you have made a very good presentation about the native cattle breeds of Kerala. Uh, and now I have a question. Has Please. any attempts been made so far uh, for crossbreeding of any of the native cattle of Kerala? Any attempts made in crossbreeding of native cattle breeds of Kerala? No, sir. No. No. We have done the crossbreeding because the entire cattle population in Kerala are crossbreds now. More than 80%, you know. That, uh, that, that time from the 70s, they have done with the native cattle only. But it is not an organized crossbreeding program. It's not at all an organized crossbreeding program. They have just to, took the nondescript local cattle for um, A with the um, first time it was with the Sahiwal, you know, the key village program. Later on, it was with the Brownsies, then Holstein Fusion and JCK. But it is not an organized way. They just want to get more milk, so they just um, crossbred this all this cattle. No, but, 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 why don't the government take an initiative in this area? Because, as you know, in many foreign countries, the Indian breeds are being uh, prosecuted with their native breeds, and uh, very good results have been uh, published. So, why not we also make some attempt in this line so that our native breeds also get a lot of publicity and importance in other countries also? Is it not so? Yes, sir. Very good question. And thanks for uh, giving good compliment to my presentation. I will just answer your question. Yes. You know, in 1900s, Brazilians took our girl and they made it there. Uh, they started with the breeding with uh, uh, HFO. So their breed is called uh, Girlando, you know. Yes, now 85% yes. of Brazil is uh, Girlando and they are yielding much better than the HF with yes. good quality milk. Yes. And they achieved it with eight generations. Yes. So we have not, we have only, we have done, not only uh, we just leave the Kerala breeds in India, we have done two things. One is free world in the military farms, and okay. second is NDRA currencies, you know, you remember that. Yes. Only, only two instances. Yes, Whereas sir. you check with the Sahi world in um, Australia, okay. there is uh, African milking Cebu. Yes. African milking Cebu is a very good breed, um, but you know, the, it is tick resistant. Yes. Ectoparasitism is a big problem now. So, yes. any, any smallest, small thing, smallest, yes. smallest quality of our breed is a big or great quality for the future. So, I think it is the same that uh, we must make an effort. At least the KT board can take an initiative because they have a farm at, uh, in, in Putur. They are maintained for uh, indigenous breeds of cattle, and uh, they at least they can take some initiative for crossbreeding of uh, at least one or two native breeds of cattle. So that in future, uh, I think uh, we will get very good results. I, I feel so. I feel so. Uh, anyway, uh, my congrats once again because you have made a, a, a very good information about the native breeds, its importance of uh, maintenance, etc. And one more question uh, What is the present price of mature milk which is uh, marketed in Kotayam? 120 India? rupees. 120 rupees. 120 rupees. Very good. Yeah. Okay. okay. Thank you very much. Okay. And is Ghee, one more thing? It's yeah. Ghee's market for 3,000 rupees. <laughs> because, uh, see, uh, I will, I will uh, uh, tell my experience. See, what I, I approached when I, when I was uh, head of the dairy plant at Manuti, uh, there was a lot of butter available in the surplus in our dairy plant. So I approached a uh, famous uh, Ayurveda um, uh, Shaila in Trishur. And they said they are getting butter at very low price from uh, Tamil Nadu. I was surprised. Then I argued with him saying that you are not getting butter. You may be getting some other product because they cannot uh, sell butter at hey. the uh, original price. So this is actually what is happening with many of the Ayurvedic preparations. 
the if a very genuine ivory product uh, has to be made we have to use very quality uh, products like ghee or butter whenever they use they have to use very quality and it is definitely fetch very high price uh, yes okay okay thank you very much thank you thank you thank you sir. thank you rajendra kumar sir so we can take any questions from uh, our dear participants you can uh, unmute and ask this panchagavi is available in the market which one sir panchagavi See, it's perishable. It's highly perishable. This panchagavya. Oh, uh, right. We have to make it daily. But panchagavya gradams are available. Oh, I see. And panchagavya medicine. So many medicines. So many places. I uh, with very good results also. Very good results. Oh, um, right. So many medicines with very good results is available with a special oh. gavya sithas. I told some ten twelve gavya gavya sithas are there. They are making oh. their product by their own. They have oh, their cows and they are taking the milk and they are making doing it everything. Oh, okay. The quantity will be very less, but oh, it is very effective. That is my personal feeling. Okay. So, Yemen the native breeds of Kerala, which breed is giving the highest yield of milk? Uh, which or or Kasar goat or Periyar? Which breed is giving the highest yield? This is Periyar, I see. Periyar. Yes. Hmm. Oh. Oh, actually, we cannot say it as a breed because it has not been, um, uh, what do you say, uh, documented as a breed. We are just in the process of getting into the breed status. But um, Periyar, I find, um, uh, is a very good, uh, uh, very good population. Um, I have done so many uh, work on it. Uh, NBIGR has taken up the project. And I am a co-investigator in the project. Uh, uh -huh. We had uh, taken uh, characters of around 100 plus cows and right. blood samples of around 50 plus animals. Um, right. The project is in the midway. Due to the corona, they can come. Uh -huh. I think it will be it will be a uh, uh, what do you it will, it will be a paradigm shift in the uh, Kerala uh, local cattle things like that. Right. And it is a good story for the future dairy industry also. Oh yes, yes. yeah, yeah. Because you say. The climate change is affecting the dairy industry like anything. That is more prone to it. Should have we should have the good candidates. Yes, yes. We have to keep the. Uh, you told me about the candy bird uh, crossing and bringing up a very good breed. That's good. But the native population should be conserved as such. Yes, yes. In touch. Yes. Later on, we can do something like. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Thank you, sir. So, Rajendra Kumar, sir, was uh, our dean, former dean, and faculty dean of Dairy Science and Technology. And uh, he was also instrumental in starting up the VKI DFT, which is now becoming prestige for our Kerala Veterinary Animations University. Thank you very much, sir. So, now other participants and uh, delegates, it's time for discussion. You can also type in your uh, queries in the chat box. So we'll check the chat box also. And sir, I will add that uh, uh, now our LPN department has an eco farm at Manuti. We are making Panjagavya for agriculture applications only. We okay. are marketing it now through eco farm. Very good. For agriculture purposes only, we are not. Uh, uh, prepared the one for human consumption, sir. Yeah. Okay. Very good. Very good. I'm so happy to hear. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Yeah, in our ULF only or outside? Yes, sir. No, sir. It's from uh, our eco farm, from Department of LPM. Oh, I Veterinary see. College Manuti. We got an eco farm at Manuti campus. So very from good. there, we are uh, now selling Panjagavias. We started actually three years back, sir. From 2016, we have started selling Panjagavia. It's a huge oh, demand for it. Okay, very good, very good. Thank 
this uh, below three catheter that you have showed, it is having a similarity with the onboard breed, I think. Is it? Am I am I correct? You are right. <laughs> Nellur breed, Nellur breed or onboard, you say? Uh, the same. Nellur and onboard is same. Uh, um, the the photo that I sh the image is a bull. I think a bull. It's a bull. The image that I have shown you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, face it has some resemblance, but ah. body it has resemblance to Kangaroo. Ah, I see. Uh -huh. And uh, Doctor Justin uh, Rajendra Kumar sir doesn't need any introduction. People all like, he's a well-known person. Ah, <laughs> uh, no sir, not for us sir, not for you sir. <laughs> yes, sir. There are many youngsters listening to him, so some of them yeah, may yeah. not know so because true. we have around uh, eighty participants. Very good. So, few of them may not know. That's why it's not for us, sir. <laughs> and some question has come up, sir. Uh, Mr. Sharath has asked to say something more about Cherwali cattle. Okay, thank you. Sharath, uh, Cherwali cattle um, is from the place called Cherwali uh, that is uh, in Kota Mundagam area. I was working in Kanyarapalli Veterinary Polyclinic. At that time, some two people, some Lijo and uh, one Pinoy, told me there are good cows there. I have seen these cows, very good ones. Um, and what happened, uh, I got two cows also. I got two cows to, for, to my house. I got a small farm, things like that, and I brought two cows also. And I written an article on this thoroughly. Um, it's very good things like that. And this publicity uh, counted very negatively. People started taking these cows. And there is, before we do any kind of good research or things like that, the original things were almost gone. That is the negative side of publicity that, that I would say. And later on, we had the project that I, I have previously mentioned, this NBHR project. There was uh, Cherwalli, also in Cherwalli, Bilduadri, Periyar, Bainat Cow, uh, three, four cows were, was there in our list, the lesson on populations. And I, we visited the place one and a half year back. Um, quite unfortunate, the numbers has dwindled like anything. Anyway, uh, I don't know much about it. That's why I didn't uh, do the slide there. But it exists, and uh, nobody to take care of them. Uh, individual efforts never uh, meet anything. There should be a team of people in and around there who love the cows and things like that, or some academicians or somebody to consult with. That's the only way we can do that. Since I don't know much about it, I didn't uh, do. I didn't say anything. But it's a very good breed. I am. Uh, I, I have. I, I have um, this cows. With, I had this cows with me. They are very good ELS. I don't have ELS. Very docile. Mostly black. I got some good photographs. I can share later. If somebody is interested, they can just uh, give me a mail. Okay, sir. Thank you, <laughs> sir. Uh, Mr. Velu Swami has asked. Please say something about the dia prepared by Mr. Aravind. Dia is made from dried dung powder and uh, uh, miti, multani miti. There is uh, some something to um, what you say uh, that uh, mold we make and some gum is also done. If you if you are interested, anybody uh, who is interested, I can give you, uh, a, I can arrange a training for um, people who want to make this kind of uh, things like uh, soaps, shampoos. Um, disinfectants or even the uh, some 10 20 products if you want mr velu swami who is interested he can call me direct um, at present i don't have that exciting things how to do things like that because it's i i, I have not done it i have just shown the slide only uh, personally i have not <clears throat> done it myself if i had done uh, i would have told all these things but i can collect all this information and give it to you if you are um, Oh, what is the purpose? Purpose is for Deepavali, we use this for uh, making small lamps. Say, we, we, we have this, um, we have this um, small, uh, what do you say, that is Chirad, we say in Malayalam, Chirad is um, generally made with earth, earth and Chirad, we see. This is uh, something that is made from earth and dung. Yeah, and the beauty of this, and it will uh, go back to the earth uh, soil naturally. 
some something that I have seen some Chinese dias or things like that they will never um, lose their integrity and they will be their assets. So it's a very good alternative to this kind of um, artificial dias. Somebody asked me about Anangana Mala. Yes, sir. Anangana Mala. Yeah, yeah. Somebody asked me. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, actually, Anangana Mala cow is not that much different from Bilwadri. That is why I didn't uh, touch on it. It is from Palakkad. Um, it is from Palakkad. I have seen this cow. Uh, its characteristics uh, is almost similar to the Bilwadri. So I cannot uh, rename or uh, make another name for it. That's why I didn't do that. Very good cows, uh, but hardy milkers. Hello. Anangan Mala is a separate breed. I don't know what to call it in a parasar. Anangan Mala is a separate breed. I don't know what to call it. It's 8 kilometers round. I don't know what to call it. Anangan Mala is a separate breed. I don't know what to call it. I don't know what to call it. I don't know what to call it. Puri Pradesh itu ada kena pasukan. Tapi dua-dua separate area le kerana generate itu adalah kawasan yang mana. Ada, yang kita orang Palakkad kan, yang mana kawasan yang ipo developer itu untuk kondo beri nanda. Oh, yang mana? Ah, around 18 members yang kita orang grow pelindah. Apa yang kita orang identify itu untuk beri kena. That's good. Yang kita orang recent ada orang pulen yang kita orang kandat itu nanda. Very nanda pun boleh sah yang mana ada itu nanda. Apa, ni yang lain ni orang develop yang lain seramatilah ni. Kalau ada korcchi orang tu. Ni Rajiv ni, ni ni tu kanda kiri macam mana tu? Ni 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 Though the locations are different, we have physical characteristics. We have to study the details of the details. We have to study the details of the details. We have to study the details of the details. We have to study the lower wagon, the breed, the population. We have to study the details. People like you, I have to study the local people who work in the local people. People like you, especially say, Karena, anggun itu grup pun yang matra me, ini nanti cuci untuk berdua. Cerewet itu kat sini pergi disaster ke arah mana? Jangan Mumbai pernah ada. If there is somebody to do that, take up the task, it will be there. That has happened with Vichu, that has happened with Vilwadri, that has happened with Periya. Ini successnya, nama ke, cerita mana untuk kita ada alkar mana orang, people who are interested. I think this presentation will will be of good use to your organisation also. Um, uh, you you can have you can take tips from the other areas or area uh, other people who are doing the same work. You can just join these people. Okay, thank okay. you. Thank you. Okay, Raji, can you hear me? Raju, can you hear me? Uh, uh, okay, clear, 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 clear. Next time we can uh, we can see the cows also. I can uh, share. Uh, okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We can uh, uh, we can just go. Sure, sir. Sure, sir. <laughs> Thank okay. you. Yes, sir. One day we have to take a visit there, sir. Yes, yes, sir. Thank you, Raju. So, further questions, please. Sir, if there are no further questions, I think we can wind up. Yes. We'll ask Rajkumar, sir. Uh, Rajkumar, sir. Riyazji. Hello. Yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, 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 so, hello. Shami. Yes, sir. Uh, hello, sir. Sir, one minute, sir. Okay. Sir, everyone uh, can uh, on your videos, we can just take one uh, photograph, one snap. Shall okay, sir. Uh, Hi. Um, thank you, sir, for sharing with us your great knowledge and ideas. I now invite Dr. Nijinal Jain, Treasurer, Indian Dairy Association, Kerala State Chapter, to give away the vote of time.
Thank you, Shamili. Respected Chairman, Rajendra Masa, Georgi Sa, uh, Justine, and Speaker of the Day, Dr. J. Devin, and all the participants, a very good afternoon to all of you. As the Chairman has already mentioned, the Indian Dairy Association Kerala Chapter is organizing a series of events in connection with the birth centenary year of Dr. Vargis Puri, the Milkman of India. So we have successfully completed the third event of this session. So now it is the time to put on record our sincere gratitude to all those who are part behind it. First of all, let me express our sincere gratitude to Dr. the speaker of the day, Dr. J. Devin Narayan, for introducing to us many of the indigenous breeds who we were aware of mainly the Vichurka and the Kasagor dwarf cattle but now we came to know about there are many of them which we are not aware of and the need of the hour is to uh, preserve or conserve these breeds in terms of the health aspects as well as for the economic as well as the environmental needs thank you very much sir for the very detailed uh, no ma'am please continue please continue ma'am uh, oh, okay 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 just you thank you Okay, so sir has elaborated all the things and from his own experience, he has uh, spoken to us. Thank you very much for uh, providing whatever all the knowledge you have put gather all those years and hats off to you for the efforts you are taking for this particular uh, uh, conservative effect of this effort for this indigenous cattle breeds. Thank you, sir. So let me put on record our sincere gratitude to Dr. Justin Davies for introducing the speaker as well as for moderating his very well. And also it is the time to express our sincere gratitude to Rajendra Kumar sir, Raj Kumar sir, and Sudhir Bhav sir, as well as Givargi sir for the uh, support and the initiatives they are taking to, uh, uh, to pay tribute to Dr. Vargis Kuri in the best possible way. And also, thanks are also due to all the participants for the, your active participation for this event. Once again, thanking you all. And also to Mr. Riyas, who is coordinating all these events very well. And to Shamili also for the part you are playing for the well conduct of all these events. And once again, thanking you all and wishing you all a nice day ahead. Thank you, sir. Thank you all. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you everyone for your active participation. The session has officially ended.